Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp, coming back at you again with another lesson entitled October 1868. Massacre number four. Historic past, promising future, indeed. <clears throat> so if you've been following along with the channel, um, I've been using um, a lot of these massacres that happened in and around uh, the Civil War and the Reconstruction period, all right, um, up until, <clears throat> up until, uh, more recent times and uh so i think i had uh see the 14 or 16 of those massacres to cover right now we're on massacre number four all right <clears throat> so this is uh the, this series really is just to or the goal of the series is to identify uh the biblical identity all right of the wicked all right, which is Esau, Edom, they're the children of wickedness, and then also the children of the Lord, all right, who are being punished <clears throat> for their sins. And that's known as the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, okay? So the children of the Lord are being punished, all right? And that's in reference to uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. <clears throat> and... The children of Israel are not supposed to be voting, okay? They aren't supposed to be voting. And we were brought to this land as punishment, all right, for our sins. So after the Civil War, <clears throat> during the Reconstruction period, you had a country divided, the North and the South, okay? So the North, all right, um in an effort to uh, try to, I guess you could say, um, mend, you know, the rift between the North and the South, they had what's called the Reconstruction Period. Now, in this Reconstruction Period, Jake became a citizen, okay? He became a citizen. He had voting rights. And what you have is you had a lot of Edomites who used violence to keep Jake from voting, okay? And 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 while you had these uh, reconstruction going on, you had the black codes, okay, where the South was writing, you know, laws, vagrancy laws, and things of that nature, you know, that that tripped Jake up and to put Jake right back on the plantations that they were freed from. All right. <clears throat> So this, this particular lesson, the St. Bernard Parish, all right, it says historic past and promising future. So they, these devils take pride, all right, in this, uh, in this massacre, okay? They say historic past and promising future. So we are definitely, all right, going to unpack this, all right? But before... Before I get into the lesson, I want to start off by reading Genesis 9 and 6. It says, Whoso shedded man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of the Most High made he man. And Numbers 35 and 33 says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. <clears throat> so what Christianity has done, all right, is conveniently omitted reincarnation. Although the scriptures talk about reincarnation over and over again, um, the religion, okay, or philosophy of Christianity, what it has done is completely omitted. And Esau think he doesn't have to pay for any of his sins. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, unpack this. 
So, 1868, St. Bernard Parish Massacre. In 1868, St. Bernard Parish was home to one of the deadliest massacres in Louisiana history. The St. Bernard Parish Massacre occurred during the Reconstruction Era, days before the presidential election of 1868. As black men gained the right to vote, white Democrats of the parish feared losing their majority. Armed groups mobilized to violently silence these recently emancipated voters to win the election in favor of Democrat Horatio Seymour over Republican Ulysses S. Grant. A Seymour victory meant the end of Reconstruction over the South and the return of Louisiana to home rule. Many freedmen were dragged from their homes and murdered. Others fled to the cane fields to hide from the perpetrators. The use of violence to suppress Republican votes was successful. Grant only received one vote from St. Bernard Parish, despite having a Republican majority. <clears throat> the reported number of freedmen killed varied from 35 to 135. Now, I've spoke on this, uh, on these numbers with these stats before, okay? <clears throat> so, most, in most cases, Esau, he's never, he's never been convicted or tried for uh, the murders that he's perpetrated, okay? In other words, he's got off scot-free, so to speak, but not totally. <clears throat> so whenever you see um, Esau, like, he's, he's the master of double speak. All right. So he don't want to be accountable for what he's done. So he'll always give you varying information. Now, if you ask Esau about eschatology or anything else, he'll act like he got it completely figured out. He'll tell you, uh, he'll try to break down times and everything else, but they can't never seem to have uh, these murder numbers correct. They're always going to give you a varied uh, mur murder murder uh, count. It says the number of whites killed was two. One was killed in an attempt to help the victims. All right, so that's the backdrop. The backdrop is <clears throat> in the past you had so-called black voters voting as Republicans. All right, and it was these Democrats, right, who was trying to silence their vote through violence. And as simple as that. So let's watch a little clip. Let's watch a little clip on uh, this subject. On Sunday, October 25th. 1868, Democrats held a pre-election rally in St. Bernard's Parish in New Orleans, Louisiana. And white marchers passed by Eugene Locke, a black man. He told him to cheer for Horatio Seymour, the Democrat presidential candidate. Locke refused and he grabbed him, threatening to hurt him if he didn't comply. One white man tried to, tried to stab Locke, while another shot at him, narrowly missed. Locke drew his own pistol and fired back, hitting the shoulder of the man who had fired at him. Outnumbered, Locke tried to run away but was shot in the head and mortally wounded before finally being stabbed. Angered by the defiance of this black man, the marchers called on all Democrats to show blacks who are in charge. Starting early October 26, 1868, and lasting throughout the week, armed the white militias hunted black people as a free sport. Democrats broke into homes and shot black residents at close range, conducted executions in the street, and killed those who tried to intervene. They planted in former slave quarters and stole items they found used for valuable, most notably registration papers. Black men were dragged out of prison and executed. A black pregnant woman was hacked to death by Democrats with bullet knives next to the courthouse. A white police officer was murdered by mobs who tried to keep the peace. While at least 135 black people fell victim to the violence, only one Democrat, Pablo Sanfilo, was killed by blacks in retaliation. A legitimate supervisor of the presidential election was jailed, executed, or fled. Grant received 
only one vote in St. Bernard Church as Seymour swept the state. Despite the federal investigation, no one was arrested for the killing of the freed people. Black survivors identified white neighbors as their assailants, but no justice was sought. Instead, more than 100 black people were arrested for the local author by local authorities for vigilantes for the killing of Pablo Sanfilo on Sunday, October 26th. Okay, so <clears throat> they said that the blacks identified their neighbors as the murderers, but no justice was served. Okay? No justice was served. So one of the Edomites that fell, it says Pablo San Falu. All right. It says he was assassinated by slaves. <laughs> they were not slaves. They were free. But this is how they this this double memorialized, all right, uh this this uh, particular white man who was in the middle of this uh you know brouhaha. He got he got uh murked, right? And it says incited by carpet bag rule. Right? They they were the ones who who uh who accosted the man and end up killing him. All right. We just started off with uh, them killing uh you know the the one black freedman that they showed you Loke or Locke. Anyhow, uh let's see. Let's get back to it. So, again, just another example, another reminder of who the wicked is. Let's get the uh, rest of the scriptures. So, here in the book of Ezekiel, you have uh, on in the 18th chapter. All right. So, the Lord, all right, is actually talking to um, the children of Israel. All right. Now, the Lord is given a list of things. All right, that just men do versus unjust men. And unjust men are going to pay. Okay. Now, this is for an Israelite, but how much more? All right, the wicked that know not the Lord. <clears throat> so I'll just read a little bit. Ezekiel 18 and 10. It says, If he begot a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains and defile his neighbor's wife. All right. And that eating upon the mountains is talking about idolatry. All right. Well, we already know uh, Esau is in plenty of forms of idolatry. And also, and defiled his neighbor's wife. Uh, Esau has raped all our women. All right. Have oppressed the poor and needy, have spoiled by violence have not restored the pledge and have lifted up his eyes to the idols which committed abomination, have given forth upon usury and have taken increase. Uh, well, we know Esau charges uh, interest to everybody, okay? Shall he then live? See, the Lord calls these things abominations. He shall not live. He have done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Now, if this was meant for an actual Israelite, all right, how much more for the heathen that know not the Lord? This is Psalms 79 and 5. How long, Yahweh, will thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Oh, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O oh power of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Okay? All right, so, so here in uh, verse uh, 8, it says, remember not against us former iniquities, all right? And that's, that's the blessed hope of the elect, okay? The elect, their hope is, is that um, their faith in Yahweh Shai to be covered in his blood so that the Lord doesn't see us, but sees the righteousness of Yahweh Shai, okay? For he was made to be sin for us that we might be made to what? 
the righteousness. All right. So verse, verse nine, it says, help us, O power of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore, should the heathen say, where is their power? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. All right. That's what that's what we're looking for. That revenge is coming. It says, let the sign of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee. O Lord, so we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Okay, so here you have King David, okay, with his prayer of retribution. Okay, that's a prayer of retribution. All right, to give the heathen what they deserve. And uh, let's expound upon that. Go to Psalms on 149. All right. <clears throat> this is Psalms 149. I'll start at one. Praise ye Yahweh, sing unto Yahweh a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Who are the saints? <laughs> well, hold on. Who are the saints? This is uh, Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye Yahweh. All right, now we know who the saints are. All right, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance and let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For Yahweh taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory and let them sing aloud upon their beds. I mean, there's going to be some singing taking place. All right. It's going to be some happiness taking place. Let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and the two edged sword in their hand. To do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor hath all his saints. Praise ye Yahweh. Okay, so these things, you know, our punishment wasn't forgotten and their punishment is not forgotten. Okay, all right. So in closing, Job 18 and 17, his remembrance shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the street he shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world he shall neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remaining in his dwellings they that come after him shall be astonished at his day as they that went before were affrighted surely such are the dwellings of the wicked and this is the place of him that knoweth not the most high. Okay. All right. So this has been October 1868, massacre number four. Okay. St. Bernard Parish, historic past, promising future, indeed. I pray that this lesson has been edifying until the next one. Shalom.